Yesterday, Nikivo version 7 came out, and I didn't get a chance to record a full video of it, so I'm going to give it a go now. The version 7 is touting full vSphere 6.5 compatibility and support. Uh, that was not true with previous releases, even though they worked just fine, something I demonstrated on video a little while ago. All right, let's get right into where IT pros with certification of some sort can sign up, or you can do a trial. Now, there's multiple options here for requesting NFR, which means no time bomb, which is rather nice for a home lab. If you're in the US, you have to dial the one first there, or type the one. All right, I'm gonna say AV expert, which is actually something they can look up. I don't know what validity checking they do because you'll see after verifying email, right away you get to the download page. So virtual appliance is next, as my article explains, and then full solution. Now I'll admit, saving myself seven minutes, I've already grabbed the file. And this is the file you get. Right over here in Windows Explorer, I've downloaded this OVA file. Uh, as you can see, I grabbed that yesterday, the 28th of March. Now, here's the thing. I have 7-zip installed on my Windows 10 machine. Uh, if you just point to this OVA and try to deploy the vSphere web client, you have an issue. And I have a workaround. Let me just go ahead and show that first. So we right-click here on the cluster. Sorry, on the particular ESXi host we want to deploy to. Right-click and deploy OVF template. So we point to that same directory where we downloaded to, of course. Click open, and it tries to do a little validity check after saying one file selected. It glides right through that instantly, a good sign. Nice DNS short name that I'm going to use for web browser access to it, rather than ugly IP addresses. And now I just wait a little bit as it finishes the validation process. Gives me a little summary there, root root for username password. Tells me I can connect with HTTPS and 4443. I'm going to show you an easier way actually. You don't even need to memorize that. Click accept. Next. I'm going to go on my fastest SSD. Uh, thin provisioned. If you're putting it on a spinning drive, I'd recommend maybe thick for speed reasons and not having to do space reclamation and other tricks. But for an SSD um, and for the a nice speedy backup to show you. Thin provision SSD is the way to go. VM network I'm going to leave alone. Click finish. And now we wait. Now if I look at Ethernet traffic, soon we should see some bits start pumping out in the send channel. And there it is. So the disks are being imaged, or the virtual disks in the VM are being imaged essentially at this point, laying down data and creating this Nikivo appliance. Now, while we wait for that, I'm gonna go ahead and start up my router administration page. Why? Because once we are able to hit edit virtual machine settings, that means this VM is done with creation and it won't power on by itself which is fine, because we then have an opportunity to go ahead and create a DHCP reservation for it. So I'm talking about right here. Looks like the network traffic will probably let up soon. DHCP reservation. So I've got an existing one that I use for uh, beta testing. I'm going to go ahead and change the MAC address to whatever it is now. Okay, just completed. You didn't miss anything. And we can wait around for that gray to not be gray, or we could just hit refresh here. Edit virtual machine settings, and head on over to the networking portion, and get that right into the clipboard. Control C will do the trick. No change made there, we're just trying to harvest the MAC address and paste it right there with Control V, 
and hit save. So now, to point to this appliance that I'm about to boot, we can click on the summary screen, uh, it'll end up with a DHCP server giving it a fixed IP of 95, but also a name called Nikivo. If we look at the VM hardware before we power it up for this first time, you can see a little bit about how the disks are arranged, the size, um, compatibility with a really old version, so you can install this even on a very old VMware. And time to fire this thing up for the first time. We can even start up a console. I'm going to go with uh, remote console. Okay, so here it is. Not much to look at. There you go. We don't need the local interface. What we really need to do is point our browser to Nikivo and get going that way. One other thing to consider is time. Go to the VM and edit its settings and head over to the VM options tab and go to VMware tools and turn on synchronized guest with host. All right, one other nice touch would be if you care about backups being automatic, even after a reboot, how about we go to the host, click on configure and go to VM startup and shutdown. Edit and let's add it as a piece of infrastructure here that we care about. Let's go ahead and auto start it even after we reboot our data center. You can see I had a Nikivo beta that's no longer needed. So a couple of smart things to do would be to check the IP address as 95, so that's a good sign. Another good thing to do is good old NSLOOKUP command. That worked. All right, now in general, you wanna use fully qualified names, um, particularly for VMware products to avoid some certificate warning kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up a new browser tab here and type HTTPS, sorry, without the S, slash slash, Nakivo with the lab.local on there, fully qualified. Looking good, there we go. Advanced, proceed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make a desktop shortcut that'll look even better, and it'll get rid of some of that stuff on the top there. All right, so now we're ready for launching this lovely Nikivo shortcut I made, a Chrome shortcut on my desktop, and let's have a look at how the product looks. And actually, you don't really need full width. You'll see what I mean in a moment. We can log in and we can figure username password right here. So for that first login, you don't even need to remember that it's the word root root. So you'll see the UI fits nicely in that amount of space. Okay, here we go with the very simple setup wizard. So what happens if I try to click next without adding something new, it lights up yellow, warning me. Nope, we have to do something. Adding a ESXi host or vCenter sounds good to me. Okay, so I've added my vCSA appliance. You might have called, called yours vCenter or something else. And now we can actually see my VMs. That's it. That was easy. Uh, we could also add individual ESXi hosts one by one if we wanted to. Now I can ignore this transporter message if I would like. A simple home lab. That works. And then finally it's offering to create a repository. We can add a new one and add this and so forth or we just click finish to get going. So that's, that's it. The product's installed. Ready for me to create my first job. VMware vSphere backup job sounds good to me. And let's open up the tree and back up Windows 10 Creator. What is that about? Well, that came out all of yesterday and it's a VM that's booted. And if we have a look here, we'll be able to see what we're backing up. And that's it. Now, mind you, this is a VM. 
any activities outside the VM are transport, transparent to it. It's not an agent backup we're about to do. So let's go ahead and do the backup. So we've pointed to Windows 10 created creators update, which is obviously booted. And we don't need to do anything here because onboard repository is already selected. And we can go with its schedule or we can just do a manual. I'm going to leave a schedule there because at the end you'll see a bunch of advanced settings. And more advanced settings or just finish and run. It allows me to run it right at the end of the job. So now our first backup's underway and what do you see with the CPU and the VM? Nothing. It's preparing a snapshot so that would be at a different level you'd want to look. If you want to see activity here Maybe you'd monitor, look at performance, and now change this over to real time. And maybe now there's something to look at. So you get the idea. Um, agentless backup, super handy in a lab to get something quickly going for daily automated backup routines of your most precious uh, VMs. So. Do we have this showing anything? You got to click there is what it's saying, that little icon. And now, yeah, you're going to see a little bit of CPU activity and a bit of disk activity. If we click here, snapshots now done. So on the right, we can see the real time kind of speedometer looking thing. That's how many megabytes per second we're getting. Uh, NVMe SSD, you would expect it to be awful fast. All right, so there you go. Disk rate jumping up. Fine. How about disk? What are we actually doing here? Well, if we look at our data center on the Samsung 960 Evo, we've got a bunch of files. including this creators update. So let's just see what it's called on the file system. So you don't think I'm pulling any tricks here. Windows 10 creators update, test one. It's hard disk, it's virtual disk, is on the Samsung 960. If we go in even further, right here you'll see the hard disk is this folder, Win 10 Icon Recording 3. Okay, so not the most awesome name, but now at least I've cleared up what we're looking at here. Okay, I got to make this bigger. This is driving me a little bonkers. Sorry. There, it just finished. You didn't miss anything already. Anyway, it's done already. Let's do a, a second run of that. Okay. Second backup should be quicker than the first, right? All right. And here it is. I'll hit refresh just so you see 35 gig of data. Obviously that went very well. CPU inside the VM shows nothing at all and very good speeds. And it seems like it's not particularly tough in the ESX host, ESXi host that's running the job. CPU spiked briefly to 30% in the beginning there when it was doing its uh, snapshotting stuff. There's the disk rate. So again, um, pretty light load here. So that's all good. So what else is there to show you? How about the amount of disk that shows inside the VM? So what's our C drive look like inside this virtual machine? Looks like three terabytes. Well, it's trickery. It's a UEFI bias in this VM, and it's really only using up 17 gig of space. So there you have it. And the overall amount of data transferred all right. Um, there's a whole lot of, you know, 
other features we could look at, but I think I've shown you now the basic demo of installing and getting your first backup done with Nikivo backup and replication version seven. So that's a wrap here. Um, appreciate your watching and hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for visiting tinkertry.com.